Sephora is constantly getting new scents, it feels like, so I thought I would give you guys a rundown of some of the newer perfumes that have launched in the last like six months. I have perfumes here. I also have some body sprays because body sprays, body mists are huge right now. I feel like we're gonna just see more and more of them this year. And I feel like I have a pretty good selection. Some of them are hits, some of them are misses, but I, of course, wanna know what you guys think about these, and I hope this will be helpful if you're thinking about picking up a new one. So let's just get into it. I'm gonna start with the perfumes, which I have a lot of travel sizes. I'm gonna start with one of the newest ones here. I try to keep this as up to date as possible, but I swear to you, there are new perfumes at Sephora like every week. So if I'm missing some of the newest ones, that is why. But I have here the Seven Virtues Amber Vanilla. I was so excited for this because it has vanilla in the name and I love a vanilla scent. And I have to say so far, I am very into this perfume, but I do not think this is gonna be for everyone because it is not the super sweet like gourmand kind of vanilla that we've been seeing. This one is definitely more of like a skin scent. This to me is the vanilla version of like Glossier U or even something like Missing Person. So you're gonna have to like those types of scents, mm, but it is good, definitely kind of musky. I feel like it's kind of addictive and it stays on my clothes for freaking ever. So I've been loving this. I'm definitely thinking about the full bottle once I go through the travel size, which is halfway done. And I just got this. I mean, this is like the newest one in here. On Sephora, the notes were amber, pink carnation, and vanilla. I didn't know what I was gonna get with that, but when you actually go to their site for more notes, cause this isn't even on Fragrantica yet. It has pink pepper in the top, pink carnation and muget in the heart notes, and then skin musks, iso e super, you know I love iso e super, and broxin and vanilla, and I really feel like the skin musks, the iso e super and the ambroxan are definitely very heavy in this fragrance. So you're gonna, again, wanna like those kind of no perfume, perfume, skin scent type of thing. Mm, but this has a nice vanilla touch to it. Again, it's not necessarily sweet, but it just gives it a nice softness, a nice roundness, and I really, really like it. I definitely give this one a thumbs up. And again, I think for an $88 bottle, mm, I think it's worth it. But I would say if you're into Glossier U, if you're into Missing Person, this is one to check out. Next Next, let's talk about the newest Kaoli. This is Eden Sparkling Lychee. My initial first impression, not my fave. It's not a bad perfume. It's very fruity, very juicy. Truly, the more I smell this, the more I get literal gummy worms, okay? Like a bag of gummy worms, not the sugary ones, just regular gummy worms, all kind of stuck together. <laughs> You're just sniffing the bag, okay? That's what I get from this. It's very sweet, very fruity. It's juicy. It is a nice fragrance if you're into that kind of scent. If you don't like something fruity, if you don't want something a little bit floral, but again, mostly sweet, juicy. I don't know if this will be for you. As the name would suggest, it has lychee in it, but it also has black currant, it has apple. So those to me are like more tangy fruits, and I definitely get that, but there's so much sugar in here that it's not overly sharp in any way. There's also lemon, which adds to that. The base has some vanilla, some ambers, but again, I just get something really fruity and juicy. So if that's your vibe, this might be one to check out. I definitely see it being a part of the Eden line because the Eden Juicy Apple, I believe it is, like these seem like sister scents to me. <laughs> for sure. It's fun, it's flirty, it's cute. It reminds me of something more like Bath & Body Works, but it is a little bit more expensive. So I don't mind having a travel size, I will say that, but I don't know if this will be a full bottle purchase for me. On a similar note, let's talk about Alice Brooklyn Apple Love. This came out a while ago, so this one's not as fresh as some of the others, but I wanted to talk about it. This is an apple heavy fragrance. There's apple in here, but there's also some peach. There's also some mandarin. So again, very fruity, not nearly as sweet as the Kaoli to my nose. I feel like the way the Ambroxan and the Musk and the Sandalwood that are playing in the base of this kind of help ground it a little bit more, although there still is sugar in here. There's also some vanilla. So it is playing in a similar way. And again, I don't mind this fragrance. If you're into something apple if you're into something fruity, it might be one to check out. But again, I'm definitely seeing a trend. And I don't know if it's because we're going into spring. A very fruity and what I feel like are more appealing fragrances coming from houses that maybe had some less appealing fragrances initially. At least in my head, that's how I've been seeing it. And I feel like with fragrance trending, just kind of across the board. I wonder if we're going to continue to see more of these like fruity, floral, easier wear fragrances instead of maybe some more adventurous stuff, at least to me. Again, everyone has their preference, but if you're into something apple-y, this again might be something to check out. Very similar to the Kaoli apple. I feel like that one's maybe a little bit sweeter as well. This isn't quite as showery as that one. We're continuing on with the fruity kind of florals. This one from Fleur Mood Ring is very popular. This has been like sold out, very viral. I feel like a lot of the Fleur 
sense tend to get a lot of hype online. I do understand why people like Mood Ring. It's fruity, it's kind of musky, it has some florals in it as well. And I find this one not nearly as sweet and maybe not quite as um, juicy as the other one. Although I believe a big inspiration for this was like fruity gummies. So we're getting a lot of fruity sweetness, I'm telling you. I find this one though has more of like a spiciness. It also has what feels like more citrus kind of coming through that cuts some of that juicy fruitiness. And I like that. I feel like it makes it a little bit more complex in a way. There's some patchouli in the base and I definitely smell that. It's not like a screechy, stinky patchouli, but I do feel like it adds some heft to this fragrance. And I feel like it adds a little bit of spice almost in a way, like something. So it has more than just like sweetness in the dry down. So I like this. If you're looking for an alternative though, I find this kind of similar. I don't know if you guys will agree to Finery Magnetic Candy. If you like that scent, I feel like you might like this, but I don't know. I just, I love Magnetic Candy. I feel like that one is so nice. It's really affordable. I'm glad to have the travel size, but again, I don't know if this is one I'll do a full bottle on. If you can't tell, I'm not like the biggest fruity girl. Moving into some other territory, I wanted to talk about the Maker Lover. I decided to pick this up because I couldn't find it in store. I think the Maker is just online right now at Sephora, which I'd love to explore more from this house. The notes in here, there's a fig note that really had me excited. And this one's definitely more my style. To me, I get a lot of woodiness from this. It's very warm, kind of sensual. I almost want to say there's like cardamom in here, but I'm not sure if there actually is. There's vetiver, some oud in here. So definitely woody, but that oud to me, it just, this reminds me of a slightly figgy version of Suntal 33. So if you like Suntal 33, I feel like this is one you might enjoy. I don't believe sandalwood's mentioned in here, but again, I just get Suntal 33 vibes with a few touches that are different. Again, the figs in here, but very, very reminiscent of that. A great unisex scent. And one of my favorites that I've been trying, I don't know if I'd get a full bottle because again, I have Suntal 33. As much as I do really like that scent, I don't know if it's like for me all the time for like full, full bottle since I have the travel, but definitely a really nice one. I feel like it smells very expensive and definitely a little more in some ways like grown up in quotes in quotes than some of the other fragrances that I mentioned. Randomly and against my better judgment, I decided to try the Daisy Wild from Marc Jacobs. The reason I wanted to try this is because although I feel like a lot of the Daisy flankers are so similar, like at this point, I'm like, it's gonna smell like Daisy. It's not gonna smell that different. If I want that DNA, like just go for Daisy. But this wasn't like a technical flanker that we've seen. It wasn't Daisy Oh So Fresh and it wasn't Daisy Love. So I thought, okay, let's try Daisy Wild. And I could totally see someone who who again, likes those fruity florals, like something sweet, would really like this. I will say the notes on this, there's banana flower, macadamia, jasmine, vetiver, and sandalwood. Very interesting and exciting notes, but to me, it's hard to pick any of that out. I would be lying if I was like, oh yeah, smell the macadamia. No, I don't even feel like I get that much of the vetiver and sandalwood. The banana flower seems to be taking over the most, but really this smells almost like a bubblegummy tuberose or something like that. Like very white floral, but sweet and candy-like. There's a little bit of tartness. I'm surprised there isn't like a lemon or a black currant or something in there, even like a rhubarb. I could see almost like a very rhubarb-y kind of tartness, maybe not the earthiness of it, but I'm definitely getting a bit of that mixed with just a very, very, very sweet, fruity, kind of white floral. So I don't think the notes necessarily represent this. I think it's one that people will enjoy. I think it kind of matches up with some of the other fruity florals I've been talking about. This one's more floral for sure than the other ones, but likable, a good one for spring. Not necessarily my cup of tea. I find that these kinds of scents can go a little soapy on me and I don't always love that. And this one goes just slightly, not too much, but not enough for me to buy the bottle for sure. But a fun one nonetheless, again, especially for spring. The last three I have in the travel sizes, this one I really quite like from Five Cents. I haven't tried a ton from this brand, but this newest one really got me because it was vanilla heavy. It's called In Too Deep. It seems like it's out of stock on Sephora, so I kind I wonder if this one's going viral or being very well liked on TikTok. I'm not over there, but I could see it because this is very reminiscent of a very popular scent we'll talk about in a second. It said this was a fragrance type warm and sweet gourmand, so that definitely had me. But the notes, Tahitian vanilla, Australian sandalwood, and sparkling sugar, I was like, mm, yeah, I'm probably gonna like that. And to me, I definitely get that. I get the sandalwood, I get the vanilla, I get the uh, sugar. It's just nice. And literally to me, this is the 
a little bit more intense version of the newest Sol de Janeiro Churrosa 59 mist. I've been loving this. We'll talk about it in a second, but like literally this is the perfume version. Like they are so similar to my nose. Every little thing about it, the vanilla, the kind of like woodiness, the level of sweetness, the way, I don't know if they have like a medical note, but there's something, I don't wanna say plasticky, but there's something kind of weird going on about them, but I love both of them. And this to me really, really is the perfume version. So if you like Sol de Janeiro 59, I think you would really, really like this. And I do find it like lasts a little bit longer because it is a perfume. But yeah, this one was really good. And I was kind of shocked because again, I haven't really tried a ton from this brand and it makes me want to check out more. I don't know how they duped it so fast, I don't know if that was the intention behind it or you know just similar scents coming out at the same time but very very good definitely recommend into deep one of my favorites the last two in the travel size that I have here we have replicas into the garden what is it from the garden not into the garden and this one is so interesting it's not gonna be for everyone the replica line from Mesa Margiela is definitely a little more I don't want to say experimental but it is a more niche leaning designer house I would say and into the garden although it's kind of weird it has like a tomato leaf note and you definitely smell that there's something earthy going on very green almost a little dirty but then it has a cologne kind of perfumey twist on it so it's not too realistic although it's definitely there and it i would say somewhat is realistic i feel like the green mandarin that's in here is really saving this fragrance it's adding that tiny bit of sweetness and almost like a juiciness to what would otherwise be pretty vegetal and very green and kind of aromatic and you get that tomato leaf i'm telling you you got to be open to a tomato leaf note there's also geranium in here which i'm not usually into i find it kind of reads spicy but i think it works in here and then there's also patchouli in the base but again i find that just to be Kind of green and spicy overall this dries down a little bit cologne -y. it's a little bit of like a unisex maybe leaning slightly masculine scent but i find this really fresh i think it's a great pick for spring if you don't want something that's floral or overly sweet at all something that's a unisex but again very very spring smelling very green from the garden is a very apt name i find this doesn't go too soapy which is nice as well um yeah definitely not one i, I don't want a full bottle i definitely don't want a full bottle but this this little travel is nice. I like it on Sam. I like it on me. It's not an everyday wear, but it is interesting. I appreciate that it's something a little bit different coming out. It's not for everyone, but for who it's for, I think they're really gonna like it. And then last for travel sizes, I did pick up the uh, Killian Born to be Unforgettable. And I guess this is a re-promotion or like a re-release of a past fragrance, I think called Boys. So the kind of intriguing note in here is a Coca-Cola note. There's also some lime. So very exciting. I would say though, if you're looking for a true Coca-Cola, this isn't it. You get something a little syrupy and Coke-like in the beginning, even some of that lime, but I find this very much smells like a guy's perfume. So um, as much as like it's unisex, I would say this to me definitely leans a little bit more masculine. It kind of smells like a deodorant. I definitely don't hate this one, but I feel like there is a little bit of like seeing the notes and then smelling this. If you're looking for something that's very, very realistic to only Coca-Cola, I don't think this is going to be it. I get the Coca-Cola touches though. I get the Coke touches for sure. The cola, the syrupiness of it. I don't find it super fizzy necessarily. It's okay on a guy. I wouldn't mind smelling it. It's a little too masculine personally for me. So if you're not into that, be careful with this one. I'm realizing I have this little sample that came from Clean Reserve. Clean Reserve recently came out with like a whole H2O line. There's like five different fragrances or something and personally I'm not really into any of them I believe this brilliant peony is a part of that it's watery it's floral not really the fragrance for me I mean I normally wouldn't go for something that has peony in the name just personally I don't mind a little watery peony note in a fragrance but I find this one a little too floral but if you like florals for spring maybe this is one to check out or just in general the line it definitely runs I think clean kind of fresh watery it's like an h2o line so i feel like that is definitely running through the collection if that's like the fragrance type you like it might be one to check out last two true perfumes i actually have full bottles first we're going to talk about sunkissed dahlia because it was sent this from skylar and i don't know if this is one i would have picked up but i find that this kind of runs in with the other kind of fruity floral thing that's going on it's sweet dahlia is in here but there is a heavy dose of vanilla and it's interesting it kind of mellows out some of the tartness or brightness that's in here especially as it dries down it kind of gets enveloped with
with a little bit of something vanilla. It kind of like softens it a bit. It has a nice sweetness to it along with the florals. Again, I'm just getting a lot of Bath & Body Works vibes from some of the new fragrances that are coming out. And don't get me wrong, I'm not opposed to Bath & Body Works. I have a, quite the collection of their body mist. And obviously they're very popular. And again, for the time of year we're going into, it kind of makes sense. But I find them a little unforgettable for me personally. And again, my personal taste, I tend to like something a little more woody or truly sweet or spicy or something like just something other than fruity floral like to me sunkissed dahlia is okay but if i had to go between mood ring the kaoli Ellis brooklyn love i would probably go with either the kaoli or mood ring those are my top two out of kind of that fruity floral selection all right and last for perfumes before we get into body mist let's talk about tom ford vanilla sex i blind bought this when it came out so i've had this a while now i have not really talked to you guys about it and i was lucky that i was able to snag it 20 percent off it was when sephora was still doing 20 percent off for the holidays it was right before i want to say christmas that this launched i'm not normally a tom ford girly i don't normally get along with the house but with a name like vanilla sex i had to know i had to know if it was for me there was like some almond notes in here lots of vanilla and with vanilla being so trendy it was like maybe this is it maybe this is the tom ford for me and i have to say it's not it's really not. My initial smell of this, I was like, what the heck? It was very stinky. It was a very animalic thing going along with this really powdery kind of semi-sweet vanilla and almond kind of smell. Now that I've had it a little bit and grown with it, that animalic kind of stinkiness only comes out more toward the end of my wear. Like after I've been wearing it a little bit, I find, and I pick up a lot more on the sweetness. I pick up on the almond that's in here. You're definitely getting like a heavy dose of almond. It's like that cherry almond, you know what I'm saying? Um, as well as the vanilla, like I get it. It's an extremely powdery vanilla. Um, I don't love that. I really don't personally love that. It's kind of almost like musky in a way. I think the Tonka is just working overtime in here to be powdery. There is something, I don't know what the combination is, but it just doesn't smell quite right on me. I don't love it. I don't feel good in it. I just don't like it. I really don't like it. So this is definitely not one to blind buy. I could see this being someone's like favorite vanilla for sure. And I feel like if you like Tom Ford stuff, I definitely think you have a higher chance of liking this. It feels like a Tom Ford vanilla. So in that way, like what else should I have expected? And I know some people have talked about this as being like a very basic vanilla. And in a lot of ways I get that cause it is like a basic kind of almondy vanilla. But at the same time, when you're working within something that is just kind of in itself basic or come to be known as basic, like I don't think vanilla actually is. But in this world, even in the name vanilla sex like it's kind of known as basic and I think that they've done something different <laughs> it's definitely different um I don't love it I don't love this if you like a powdery almondy vanilla that sounds up your alley it might be one to look into but it's definitely not the vanilla for me overall um it was not a winner in my book. I wanna move on to body mist. I know there are some perfumes I'm not mentioning that have gotten a lot of hype. The YSL Black Opium Red. I know that one is very popular right now and I think it's a nice one. I tried to get my hands on it, like literally impossible. It's like sold out everywhere and I personally did not wanna buy a full bottle of it. It has a cherry note along with that Black Opium DNA and I, I smell that. I smell the cherry, but it's also very Black Opium and I could see people really liking it. I still prefer the Le Parfum version personally and I think think if you're really into cherry and you also like black opium it could be a really good option for a new designer scent out there I'm telling you perfume is so hot some of these launches they just like sell out immediately so it can be kind of hard to get your hands on once you know everyone starts making some commotion about them but let's move on to body mists because body mists are also so hot I have a feeling a lot more brands are going to come out with body mists in this year into next year and we'll just touch on the Sol de Janeiro I've kind of already spoiled that I like this and I really like like it. I mean the dent doesn't lie. I have the big bottle here. I've been using this a ton. Now would I say this is revolutionary? No, I really don't think it is. The notes on here, let's see. Vanilla orchid, sugared violet, sheer sandalwood. I'm telling you, very similar to that five cents into deep fragrance. They are literal twins. They are literally twins to me. But I find this has like a nice amount of vanilla. It's really nice and sweet, a little bit sugared. You get some of the sandalwood, but it's not like woody by any means. The vanilla has a 
nice amount of creaminess, but I would say overall it is pretty kind of sheer and translucent. It's just airy. It's just nice. It's an easy, easy wear. I like it in the daytime when I'm just hanging out. I really love this for after a shower or when I'm going to bed even. I think it works really well there. And like I was kind of saying, like as much as I like this fragrance, do I think it's like groundbreaking, the best thing ever? No, but am I wearing it all the time? Yeah, I am. I'm wearing it a lot. I think it's really nice. I've enjoyed it a lot. So I'm very, very happy with this launch from Sol de Janeiro. I'd love a richer, thicker, creamier vanilla without maybe some of those other florals as heavy, like a more true vanilla, but I will take this. I will totally take this. This one's a lot more light, very spring, summer appropriate without feeling too foody, you know? I wanted to touch on the Fleur scents because I have all of them now. These did come out more around, I want to say the holidays. So they've been out a little bit, but that means that they've sold out and come back. So now you can actually get them again. They started off with three scents. We'll talk about Mango Mood first. This one to me, I mean, I feel like almost all of them are kind of dupes in a way, but I really find Mango Mood specifically to be a dupe of like Mango Skin from Wilhelm. Yeah. If you like mango skin, this is the body mist version for sure. Although it's like juicy mango and has that fruitiness, there's like this richness. There's kind of this depth and almost something a little bitter coming off from the mango in here. Back in the day, there used to be a red wine note listed for mango skin for the Wilhelm scent. And I almost get that kind of red wine touch in here. That scent's been deleted from the notes for some reason, but I get something like that. So it's not just this fruity, sweet, ripe mango. Again, it has a little bit of depth. It has something a little bit bitter, a little bit sexy, a little dash of red wine, okay? That's what I get from this. Next, Amber Hayes. To me, Amber Hayes is for sure their version of a Baccarat DNA. We're getting the amber. We're getting the sweetness. I'm assuming there's like a jasmine touch in here. Like, yeah, saffron, jasmine, amber, vanilla, musk, oak moss. It is for sure their version of Baccarat. It's nice, maybe a little bit deeper than some of the other uh, clones that are out there. I mean, this is so done at this point. You can find a similar DNA to Baccarat all over the place. Sol de Janeiro has theirs. I believe Finery just came out with one. I think it's nice to have, but I think because I love Baccarat so much, I just tend to wear that. But if you're looking for something, this one's nice. The real standout though, I feel like is Vanilla Skin. This is a really nice kind of thick, musky vanilla. Oh my gosh, this one burns my nose. I don't know if they were trying to make a dupe of Kaoli Vanilla 28. I get some of those vibes from it because it is that richer vanilla. I also feel like this is very similar to the Victoria's Secret kind of bare vanilla line. So if you like that, you'll probably like this, but I feel like Victoria's Secret is a little bit cheaper. It's nice. It has a nice sweetness to it, a nice richness to it, along with that muskiness. It's sweet. I don't feel like it's overpowering though. It kind of has a fluffy feel to it. Again, I have a little bit of a dent going. I've really enjoyed enjoyed this. It's a nice one for sleep. I tend to wear a lot of my body mist more for like the end of the night, kind of cozying up after you get out of the shower, getting into bed, just hanging out, watching a movie. That's where I really like to wear my body mist. So I specifically like these more cozy scents, vanilla scents, things like that. It's nice. I wish it didn't burn my nose. It's so funny. Kaoli's Vanilla 28 does that to me. Uh, Chocolate Greedy does that to me from Montal. There's a few that do have, like if I get a cloud going, I got to be careful. I got to kind of hold my breath because if not my nostrils are like on fire this one definitely does that for whatever reason I don't know what that is but it definitely happens all right two more body mess to talk about this one from Ellis Brooklyn peaches 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 okay I was so excited for this I have all of the Ellis Brooklyn body mist and I really like them I find them really nice the sprayer top notch like I love that and as the name suggests it's like a nice peachy fragrance I find this to be kind of a musky peach ring going on I don't feel like it's overly complicated I don't feel like it's saying much more than peach to be honest I don't find this overly sweet for sure uh, but it has a nice amount of sweetness it's a great spring perfume kind of reminds me of peach fields from Skylar maybe a little bit sweeter but I, I really have nothing else to say if you like peach it might be one to pick up I like the Ellis Brooklyn body mist I think they might have raised the price on them. I believe this is $48. I want to say the other ones debuted at $45, but I saw in Ulta that they have smaller versions of the mist, I think for $35. So I don't know what's up with that, what they're doing with pricing. I think this is nice. Again, if you like
like peach. I don't think it's a must have. My favorite from the line is still the sun fragrance, but I do enjoy the body mist from Ellis Brooklyn. I think they're very elevated in the bottles, but it'll be interesting to see the scents that they continue to come out with because again, we're really seeing this trend of fruity florals. I feel like kind of um, easier to like fragrances. And I think as fragrance becomes popular, I have a feeling we're gonna get more of those mass appealing fragrances from houses, but I'm hoping we can still get something interesting, maybe a little bit different, maybe something that's starting a new trend. We'll see, we'll see what we get. I'm a little worried, I'm not gonna lie, for some of the brands coming into Sephora, to be honest. Okay, last we're gonna leave it off though with Rare Beauty. Rare Beauty came out with this fragrance mist and hair mist. It's like for the body and hair. It has a different kind of spraying mechanism, or at least it feels that way. So you shake it up, it has balls in there. This is very oil heavy for a mist. I don't know if they did that because it is supposed to be using the hair and sometimes things with really high alcohol contents can kind of dry hair out. So I don't know if that's why, but I definitely get a lot of oil. When I spray this, it gets oil on everything. It gets oil on my floor, it gets oil. Everywhere. I don't like that about it, okay? And you can see there, like it's just a different spray. I appreciate that it's doing something different, but I don't know if I particularly love that. Love the packaging color though, overall. As for the scent, I'm really happy that this is a different kind of cozy scent. I believe it's supposed to be like comforting and all of that. So I would naturally assume something kind of vanilla, but this isn't. This is citrus. I feel like there's vetiver, like I get a strong vetiver from it. It's kind of spa-like in a way. Definitely different than what I was expecting. The notes from Sephora, lemon zest, violet, vetiver, definitely heavy vetiver. If you don't like vetiver, I don't think you're gonna like this. Again, I definitely pick up on the citrus. I wouldn't necessarily peg it specifically for lemon, but it is highly citrus as well. And then the violet, I don't know if I picked that up necessarily, something kind of watery about it. And it reminds me kind of of Bald Afrique from Byredo. It's kind of giving that vibe if you like that, if you want something that's kind of refreshing, a skin scent, but still kind of overall comforting and cozy. I feel like this is nice. The vetiver gives it a nice warmth. I don't know. I, I like the scent overall. I think it's just I don't love the formula and even the way it sprays. It's just not my favorite. So it's less about the scent itself and more about that. I also feel like because it's a body mist, I tend to wear those more around the house and again after the shower or cozying up, those types of things. And as much as this is a cozy scent, I don't wear this as much as my vanillas, at least at the moment. And again, the fact that it has just so much oil, I'm just very <laughs> specific about when I spray this and where I spray this so I feel like something more moisturizing like that I would tend to wear at night but I don't necessarily love this scent at night for myself so as much as I actually like the scent itself like I genuinely think it smells good there are reasons why it's just not getting all the love for me so let me know what you think of these scents if you've tried them out from Sephora if you bought them yourself let us know your review if there's a scent I'm missing and you want to know about it leave a comment I will try to get back to you and let you know my thoughts on those fragrances I've most likely smelled them I just don't have them in front of me and I can at least give you a hopefully some quick words, but if I have to leave you off with the top three, I would go with the Sol de Janeiro or the Five Cents. I feel like, again, these are the same scent, okay? They're like the same thing. Love those. I've genuinely been using them a ton. I also really do like a vanilla skin from Fleur. I think it's a really easy, nice vanilla scent. Oh, it's hard to pick a top three. Um, I feel like I'm already cheating because I already talked about three, but I think the only other one I'm really expecting to get a full bottle of is the Seven Virtues Amber Vanilla. I really like this. I feel like Classy You and those kind of skin scents, but you want this slightly vanillic version, not necessarily in a sweet way, just in a rounded soft way to those like musky, isoe, super molecular notes. I think you'd really like this, but that is all. I hope this gave you a nice guide to check out some of the new scents at Sephora. And other than that, I will see you in the next one. Bye.